Jeremy Clarkson is a name that resonates with many, especially for car enthusiasts. He is an English broadcaster, journalist, author, and presenter who has gained immense popularity as the host of the television show Top Gear from 2002 until 2015. Moreover, he is also known for hosting Amazon Prime's car show, The Grand Tour, and being a frequent columnist for The Sunday Times. But how much money does Jeremy Clarkson make from his 10 jobs, including Clarkson's farm? How did he build such a successful career? And how is Jeremy Clarkson's lifestyle? Keep watching to find out. Jeremy Clarkson's early life, set against the backdrop of the quaint market town of Doncaster in South Yorkshire, England, was one of humble beginnings. Born on April 11, 1960, to Edward Grenville Clarkson, a traveling salesman known for his tea cozies, and Shirley Gabriel, a teacher, Jeremy's childhood was far from lavish. The family resided in a modest four-bedroom farmhouse in the picturesque village of Berg Wallace. Despite the idyllic setting, the Clarksons weren't particularly affluent and often found it challenging to make ends meet. The financial constraints didn't deter his parents, particularly when it came to Jeremy's education. Shirley and Edward aspired for him to attend one of the prestigious public schools, although they were uncertain about how they would afford the fees. They really didn't want me going to the local state school in South Yorkshire, which was rough, Clarkson shared on BBC Radio 4's Desert Island Discs program. This determination to provide a better educational opportunity for Jeremy highlighted the family's values and aspirations. Interestingly, Jeremy's first encounter with the BBC came quite early in his life, at the tender age of 12. He played the role of Atkinson in the radio adaptation of Anthony Buckeridge's Jennings novels, which were set in the fictional Linbury Court Preparatory School. However, this stint in the broadcasting world was short-lived. Richard Hammond, in an interview on LBC Radio, was once asked why Jeremy's role ended abruptly. With his characteristic humor, Richard quipped, He will have done something stupid, obviously. The actual reason, though, was far less sensational. Jeremy's voice had broken due to puberty, making him unsuitable for the role. Jeremy Clarkson's journey to Repton School in Derbyshire, which began just before he turned 13, was made possible by an ingenious idea from his mother, Shirley. Recognizing the financial burden of Jeremy's education, she created a Paddington Bear stuffed toy. This charming toy captured the hearts of many and became quite popular, providing the family business with a much-needed financial boost. The revenue from these sales enabled Jeremy to attend not only Hill House School in Doncaster, but also the prestigious Repton School. However, Jeremy's time at boarding school didn't quite align with his parents' aspirations. The newfound independence of living away from home led to a sense of freedom where Jeremy felt less constrained by parental oversight. Who cares that your English teacher knows you've had a fag, Jeremy would later remark, reflecting his attitude towards the authority figures in his life at that time. In terms of academics, Jeremy was successful, passing nine O levels but his behavioral issues continued to be a challenge. He was known for his rebellious activities, including smoking, drinking, and bending the rules of his single-sex school environment. This streak of defiance culminated in him being asked to leave Repton School just 10 weeks before his A-levels. Reflecting on his school days, fellow ex-pupil Jerry Austin told the Sunday Times, When you're young, you never guess which people are likely to make themselves into world-renowned figures. Certainly, Jeremy wouldn't have sprung to mind. Post his abrupt departure from the education system, Jeremy Clarkson, now standing at an impressive height of six sift five in with dark, curly hair, found himself at a crossroads. With limited options at his disposal, he returned home to assist his parents with their Paddington Bear business. Despite their disappointment in his school expulsion, Jeremy maintained a positive outlook. They were so cross with me, he recalled, but I always believed something would come along. In my life, it always seemed to. During this period, Jeremy took and passed his driving test. However, his driving career had a rocky start. Just 37 hours after getting his license, he had a dramatic mishap, losing control of the vehicle and crashing into a herd of sheep. 
This incident not only damaged his mother's Audi, but also dealt a blow to his self-confidence. Jeremy reflected on the accident. When I passed my driving test, I thought I was the best driver ever. The crash was a harsh reality check. It made me realize I wasn't invincible. This experience profoundly impacted his approach to driving. He became more cautious and responsible, a change that he credits for his clean driving record on public roads since then. Jeremy Clarkson's journey to journalism was as serendipitous as it was unexpected. One day, while wandering the streets, he encountered a family acquaintance who happened to be the general manager of the local newspaper. The manager inquired about what Jeremy was doing, and upon hearing about his expulsion from school, suggested he try journalism. Seizing the opportunity, Jeremy secured an interview at the Rotherham Advertiser. His resume was slim, but a stroke of good luck played in his favor. It turned out that Jeremy's grandfather, a respected GP, had heroically delivered the editor's first child during a World War II air raid. In gratitude for this brave act, the editor decided to offer Jeremy a job. Jeremy's early days in journalism were marked by his own admission of being properly rubbish at local reporting, perhaps the first instance of his later self-coined phrase, ambitious but rubbish. His time at the newspaper was characterized by a series of memorable mishaps. On one occasion, he forgot the purpose of his interview with a grieving woman. Another time, he had to abruptly leave an inquest in a fit of hysterical laughter while joking around with a colleague. Les Payne, a former deskmate of Jeremy's, reminisced about those days. He was very much the same as he is now. He was a younger version of the current Jeremy Clarkson you see on TV. He mucked in with the rest of the office but was always outspoken and unapologetically himself. After leaving the Rotherham Advertiser, Jeremy Clarkson continued his journalism career with stints at the Rochdale Observer and the Wolverhampton Express and Star. However, he quickly realized that provincial journalism wasn't aligning with his aspirations and ambitions. One evening, while discussing something as mundane as the installation of new office furniture with his girlfriend, Jeremy had a moment of clarity. Reflecting on this in a Dessart Island Discs interview, he recounted, I knew at that moment that I had to leave. When new office furniture becomes so important that you even mention it, it's time to pack your bags, get out, and move 200 miles away. With this realization, Jeremy headed south still in search of his true calling. Living in Fulham, in the heart of Thatcher-era London, he was surrounded by a culture of entrepreneurship. Everyone seemed to have their own business, Jeremy observed. Whether it was renovating houses or running print shops, it inspired me. I knew I had to start my own venture. So he set himself a goal, to come up with one new business idea every day. Amidst this period of introspection and ideation, there was one passion that remained a constant in Jeremy's life, his love for cars. This led him to start the Motoring Press Agency, through which he began providing car reviews to regional newspapers. His knowledge, wit, and unique perspective on motoring quickly caught the attention of a wider audience, leading to a regular contributor role at Performance Car magazine. The year 1987 marked a significant turning point in Jeremy Clarkson's career. It was at a Citroen car launch in New Forest where he crossed paths with John Bentley, a researcher for Top Gear. Bentley immediately saw Clarkson's potential for television. He was exactly what I was looking for, an enthusiastic motoring writer who could bring fun to cars on TV, Bentley recalled. His opinions and irreverence were refreshing compared to the usual respectful and serious tone of motoring journalism. The fact that Jeremy looked and sounded like a young, ex-public schoolboy was irrelevant, as was the somewhat school-bullying air about him. I just knew he was perfect for the job. Following a successful screen test, Jeremy officially joined the Top Gear team in 1988. The initial lineup included Tiff Dell, Tom Boswell, and Tony Mason. Clarkson admits his first appearances were somewhat stiff, but as he grew more comfortable in front of the camera, his natural charisma and humor began to shine through. Under his influence, 
Top Gear evolved into a more humorous, controversial, and openly critical show, which led to a significant increase in viewership. Jeremy's on-screen persona underwent a transformation as well. He swapped his formal blazer, tie, and chinos for what would become his signature look, tight denim jeans and a casual jacket. He became renowned for his blunt critiques of cars he disliked. His reviews were often laced with humor and brutal honesty. For instance, in his review of the Ford Scorpio, he quipped that they filmed it mostly from the rear to avoid scaring the viewers. His review of the Vauxhall Vectra was even more biting, as he infamously remarked, I have to fill seven minutes with a car that doesn't merit seven seconds. This bold and unique approach to car reviews set Jeremy apart in the world of automotive journalism. His style was a breath of fresh air in an industry that often tended towards the dry and technical. Clarkson's blend of humor, honesty, and a touch of controversy quickly made him one of the most recognizable and influential figures in the automotive world. As Jeremy Clarkson's fame grew, it brought along a curious and somewhat amusing consequence. His preference for denim jeans, a staple of his wardrobe, was humorously cited by some as a reason for the drop in denim sales in the mid-1990s. This phenomenon, particularly affecting brands like Levi's, was attributed to the association of jeans with middle-aged men, a trend humorously termed the Jeremy Clarkson effect. Jeremy's distinct style and forthright manner soon caught the eye of BBC executives. Impressed by his no-nonsense approach and growing popularity, they decided to capitalize on his unique brand of humor and outspokenness. In 1998, the BBC launched a new talk show aptly named Clarkson on BBC Two. The show was a perfect platform for Clarkson to showcase his candid style, often featuring him engaging with and sometimes goading celebrities. The show was quintessentially Clarkson in every sense, unfiltered and often courting controversy. For instance, during an interview with feminist writer Germaine Greer, he made the blunt statement, There are no transsexuals in Chipping Norton, that's just a fact. He also brought his unique brand of humor to the show, as seen in a memorable skit, where he amusingly placed a 3D map of whales inside a microwave oven. Jeremy Clarkson parted ways with Top Gear in 1999, and in one of his weekly newspaper columns, he took a rather blunt swipe at Birmingham the city where the show was filmed, calling it the armpit that masquerades as Britain's second city. He also reflected on his own style on the show, musing that his once shocking tactics had lost their edge. The first time I compared a car to Cameron Diaz, it might have been funny, he said, but after a while, even I found it tedious. With Jeremy's departure, a relatively fresh-faced James May stepped in to fill the void on Top Gear. May presented several car reviews, including ones on the Rover 75 and Lexus IS 200. Despite May's distinctive charm and knowledge, the show struggled to retain its audience. Viewership plummeted from a peak of 6 million to less than 3 million, leading to the show's cancellation in 2001. Following this, several of Top Gear's former presenters, including Tiff Dell, Quentin Wilson and Vicki Butler Henderson left the BBC to start a new motoring show, Fifth Gear. Jeremy Clarkson's net worth in 2024. Jeremy Clarkson's impressive net worth, estimated at around $70 million, reflects a career marked by both success and longevity. Clarkson, a well-known figure in the world of automotive journalism and television entertainment, continues to thrive in his career. His work spans several high-profile brands and networks, including Amazon Prime Video, The Sun, The Sunday Times, ITV, and the BBC, where he worked from 1988 to 2015. His notable television appearances extend beyond the beloved Top Gear. He's been the face of the Grand Tour, taken the helm of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and hosted other shows like Jeremy Clarkson's Motor World, Robot Wars, Jeremy Clarkson's Extreme Machines, Clarkson, Clarkson's Car Years, Speed, and more recently, Clarkson's Farm. Each of these projects showcases his unique blend of knowledge, humor, 
and a distinctive presenting style. According to Celebrity Net Worth, Clarkson's earnings from Top Gear alone were around $4 million per year. However, his financial involvement with the show went deeper. Owning 30% of the rights to Top Gear meant he also earned substantial dividends and bonuses, typically adding an additional $7.5 to $13 million to his annual income. In 2013, when the BBC bought out all outstanding stakes to take full control of the Top Gear brand, Clarkson received around $21 million from the deal. Today, the bulk of Clarkson's income is derived from his broadcasting and hosting endeavors. As a journalist and television host, he commands a significant salary, reportedly around $20 million per year. This income, combined with his past successes and various ventures, contributes to his considerable net worth. Car Collection Jeremy Clarkson stands out from other celebrities, not just for his fame but also for his impressive collection of supercars. Reflecting his well-known passion for automobiles, as seen on the motoring show Top Gear, Clarkson boasts a remarkable collection. As reported by HotCars.com, his garage houses around 28 luxurious vehicles showcasing his deep love and enthusiasm for cars. This extensive collection is hardly a surprise to those familiar with Clarkson's work and his avid interest in all things automotive. Let's take a peek inside Jeremy Clarkson's massive car collection. Alfa Romeo Alfetta, GTV6, $30,000. Jeremy Clarkson's collection of cars includes some truly spectacular models, but the Alfa Romeo Alfetta GTV6 holds a special place in his heart. Despite not being the priciest car in his garage, this Alfa Romeo has been a favorite of Clarkson's since his early driving days, which began with a 1969 Ford Cortina, as noted by GT. The Alfetta GTV6, with its 2.5-liter V6 engine delivering 158 horsepower and 152 lb-ft of torque, stands out for its blend of performance and design, making it a cherished vehicle in Clarkson's impressive collection. Ferrari F355, $95,000. Jeremy Clarkson's experience test driving a Ferrari F355 on an episode of Top Gear left a lasting impression on him. So much so that he decided to acquire one for himself. The Ferrari F355, a quintessential classic from the mid-1990s, boasts a 3.5-liter V8 engine with a power output of 375 horsepower. Known for its impressive performance, it can sprint from 0 to 60 mph in a mere 4.6 seconds and reaches a top speed of 183 mph. As of now, this model holds a value of around $95,000, a testament to its enduring appeal and status as a collector's item. Mercedes-Benz CLK63 AMG Black Series, $135,000. In 2007, Jeremy Clarkson treated himself to a Mercedes-Benz CLK63 AMG Black Series, according to KRHP. This model is the high-performance variant of the well-loved CLK-class luxury coupe. It is a true powerhouse in Clarkson's collection, Bentley Continental GT, $200 to $500. Jeremy Clarkson's Bentley Continental GT is not just any car. It comes with an intriguing story. Originally, this Grand Tourer was acquired by the Grand Tour team for an episode filmed in Madagascar. To suit the rugged terrain of the shoot, the car underwent extensive modifications. The team equipped it with lift kits, a roll cage, snorkels, off-road tires, and various other accessories, effectively transforming it into a formidable off-road machine. After the filming wrapped up, Clarkson was so taken with the Bentley's performance and adaptability that he chose to keep it. He's since been seen driving it around his farm, a testament to its versatility and his fondness for the car. This vehicle stands out as a unique piece in Clarkson's collection, blending luxury with rugged off-road capability. Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG Roadster, $213,000. In 2011, Jeremy Clarkson added a stunning vehicle to his collection, the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG Roadster. This high-performance convertible sports car is not only a feast for the eyes, but also a marvel of engineering. Paired with a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission 
the SLS AMG Roadster boasts remarkable acceleration capabilities. It can sprint from 0 to 60 mph in a mere 3.7 seconds, placing it among the fastest cars on the road. This combination of elegant design and sheer power makes the SLS AMG Roadster a prized possession in Clarkson's esteemed car collection. Lamborghini Gallardo Spider, $225-$400. Another gem in Jeremy Clarkson's car collection was the Lamborghini Gallardo Spider, a vehicle he decided to purchase after test driving it on top gear. However, Clarkson's time with the Gallardo Spider came to an end in 2017 when he reportedly sold the car. His stint with this exceptional supercar, known for its speed and agility, was a testament to his passion for high-performance vehicles and the thrill of driving. McLaren 675LT, $349,500. Jeremy Clarkson's collection includes a striking bright orange McLaren 675LT, a testament to his taste for high-performance vehicles. The 675LT, an enhanced version of the already formidable 650S, is a marvel of automotive engineering. It features a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission known for its rapid and seamless gear changes. The McLaren 675LT in Clarkson's garage is not just a car. It's a blend of art and performance, reflecting his passion for speed and cutting-edge automotive technology. Clarkson's Motorcycle Collection Jeremy Clarkson's passion for all things automotive extends beyond cars. He has also owned an impressive array of motorcycles over the years. His taste in bikes, much like his taste in cars, showcases his appreciation for both classic and high-performance models. One notable bike in his collection was the Ducati 916. This iconic motorcycle wasn't just a part of his personal collection. It also made appearances in a few episodes of Top Gear. Its sleek design and powerful performance made it a favorite for Clarkson and the show's audience. Another classic motorcycle that Clarkson owned is the Triumph Bonneville T100. This bike, known for its timeless design and reliability, was also featured in an episode of Top Gear. Its presence on the show highlighted Clarkson's diverse range of automotive interests. Additionally, Clarkson owned the Honda CBR 1100XX Super Blackbird, a bike known for its high speed and powerful performance. Overall, Jeremy Clarkson's collection of cars and bikes paints a picture of a man deeply passionate about motoring. While he has sold many of his vehicles over the years, his impact on the automotive world remains significant. He continues to be a revered figure among car and bike enthusiasts worldwide, known for his knowledge, enthusiasm, and unique perspective on motoring. Houses Jeremy Clarkson, renowned for his larger-than-life persona, also leads an extravagant lifestyle reflected in his diverse property portfolio across the UK and internationally. Among his most notable acquisitions is Diddley Squat Farm, an expansive 1,000-acre farm located in Chadlington, Oxfordshire. Purchased in 2008, Clarkson has dedicated himself to transforming this farm into a thriving agricultural business. This venture gained wider public attention through Clarkson's Amazon Prime series, Clarkson's Farm, which chronicles his journey into farming. Another notable property is a 300-year-old farmhouse situated in the Cotswolds, which he purchased in 2009 for nearly $5 million. Another prized asset is his Cotswold house, a lavish five-bedroom residence in the picturesque Cotswolds region. Clarkson bought this property in 2012, adding to his impressive collection of homes. In addition to his country estates, Clarkson owns an apartment in the trendy Notting Hill area of London, which he acquired in 2016. This city residence offers him a convenient urban retreat. Further showcasing the breadth of his property interests, Clarkson owns a place on the Isle of Man. This property is reportedly used as a holiday home, offering a tranquil getaway. Another jewel in his property crown is a luxury villa on the Spanish island of Mallorca, which Clarkson purchased in 2009.
This Mediterranean haven underscores his taste for lavish and scenic living spaces. Jeremy Clarkson's property portfolio is a testament to his success in the entertainment industry. His investments span from rural farms to luxury villas, reflecting his extravagant lifestyle and a keen eye for valuable properties. Private life. Jeremy Clarkson has experienced his share of personal journeys, having been married twice. His first marriage was to Alexandra James in 1989. However, their union came to an end in 1993. From this marriage, he has a daughter named Emily, born in 1994. Following his divorce, Clarkson found love again, this time with his manager, Francis Kane. The couple tied the knot in 1993. Together, they expanded their family, welcoming two children, a daughter, Katya, born in 1998, and a son, Finlow, born in 2003. Unfortunately, their marriage concluded in 2014. In his current chapter of life, Jeremy Clarkson is in a relationship with Lisa Hogan. Lisa has become a familiar face to fans, regularly appearing alongside Jeremy in his show, Clarkson's Farm. Jeremy Clarkson's journey, both personal and professional, has been as varied and fascinating as the cars he's so passionate about. From his impressive vehicle collection to his adventures in farming and his relationships, his life is a tapestry of intriguing stories. What aspect of Jeremy Clarkson's multifaceted life do you find the most compelling? Is it his unique collection of cars and bikes or his dynamic television career? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear your perspective. And if you've enjoyed this deep dive into Clarkson's world, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content exploring the lives of public figures and their captivating stories. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.